ladies and gentlemen, it all started with a call. I remember the day before I had my half marathon, I was calling my mother on the phone. I remember I was, I was, I was telling her, oh, mother, I'm going to do some running now. And she was like, oh, that's great. Then I remember telling her, oh, mother, I'm going to do a half marathon quite soon. And that kind of came out of the blue, right? I wasn't actually thinking about doing the half marathon. I was thinking about bragging to her about how my running expertise is going to come into play. And my mother was like, nah, Simba, listen, listen to me. Your father's done a half marathon in the past and he actually failed halfway. And um, he really had a bad stitch halfway through and he had to give up around 10K. So due to all the health uh, risks that are taken into account during the half marathon, you shouldn't try to run a half marathon. I was just listening to her. I just listened to her. And I was like, ain't no way. Ain't no way my father tried to run a half marathon and he didn't try to do it. And he didn't manage to do it. I was like, nah, I'm going to one-up daddy. I'm going to one-up him right here, right now. I'm going to go out there and run a half marathon. And that was initial. Like, that was the initial drive for me to go out and just absolutely destroy this record that was in play. But... It didn't really go out like that. I remember the following day, I was genuinely not thinking about running the half marathon the following day. I was thinking, okay, maybe we're going to take a few weeks, maybe we're going to take a few months. As I'm not a runner myself, evidently, I've only done football and rugby in my life. So I was kind of used to fast sprints instead of long endurance runs. So this was quite a new concept for me. I remember going to school the following day and I was sitting down, cross-legged, reading a book, meditation position like I normally am, right? Um, and it was the sun was shining. I remember getting up. And you know how when you sat in a place for a long time, you kind of take a moment to get up and your legs feel numb and you kind of stop in your tracks. Well, I stopped in my tracks. I stopped halfway towards the science building. I was trying to get there for my next lesson. And I remember my friend was walking behind me. I was like, yo, yo man, please, can you help me get to the science building? Because I was stood there like a tree. Like I could not move my legs at all. Then I told him, please don't push me over. Brother thought it was funny to push me over. So he, he pushed me over, right? You know how you, when, when you're like, like that, you kind of fall like that, a split, like splat. And I landed on my hip. That was bad. No, was that? When I tell you it was bad, it was quite bad. And uh, my hip started hurting every single time I took a step. So imagine like this kind of bone-ish thing grinding against your muscles every time you move. And it was like consistent. It was like constant. It was this like thing that you can't get out of your mind. It's always at the back of your mind, right? It's har harassing you. It's annoying you. And that was the feeling I got when my hip fell against the floor. And I was, that was hurting, right? Also had my numb legs. So, you know, I was not feeling it. I was feeling like a 5k that day. I'm gonna be honest, I was feeling like a 5k on a Saturday. It was the sun was shining, it was nice, it was 2 p.m. And I was like, no, I'm up upper. <laughs> I was like, ain't no way I'm running a 5k today. Look at the sun, look at the absolutely amazing day. I'm not gonna just run a 5k. I was like, should I run a 10k? I was like, nah, I'm gonna up that. I'm gonna run a half marathon without training after I hurt my head. After I told my mum that I'll up my dad, I was going to go out the following day and run a half marathon. And that was probably not the smartest idea, I'm going to be honest. But I was just trying to up myself, you know what I'm saying? I'm the kind of competitive dude who would just like go out there and like actually do something that he says he's going to do. So I had that competitive nature innately in my body. So I ran... I remember it was 2.57 in the afternoon. I remember it was so clearly. I started my time. I was like, bang, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I was stretching before. I was actually being like a super professional. I was like, I'm going to get into this mindset, man. I'm going to get into this winner's mindset. And I'm going to be like all the runners and other people. And I was going to destroy this challenge. There's nothing to me. Half marathon, 21K. It's only 21K, man. Yeah. It was, it was only 21K until you got running. You realize after you run down the first, like downhill, then you go upwards. Man, it's, it's difficult. Because you know how when your hip hurts, it was my left hip, by the way, it grinds against your muscles, as I said previously. And the fact that it grinds against your muscles makes you want to put less pressure on that leg. And in turn, I was pushing more pressure on my right leg. 
and it was just me. I had shin splints and I didn't really know about that because I was just not a runner, you see. I had shin splints on my right knee, uh, on my right shin. I was absolutely dying. I remember going up that first uphill. I was like, God damn, there's no way I do this 21K. There was no way. I was 500 meters in. I was thinking about quitting. I was thinking about quitting 500 meters in. But I was like, ain't no way. It's all in the mind. I'm gonna up myself. I'm gonna up my mind. What can I say? I'm just that into it, you know what I'm saying? So I decided that was nice to run this way. And you know how when you constantly move something, my hip became less painful because my shin was getting more painful? So it was that kind of scenario. Then I figured, okay, if my hip gets less painful, my shin gets more painful, then if it gets more painful for me to run than the pain in my shin, I could technically outweigh all these pains by just putting all the pain on my body. And okay, by the time I reached 5K, I was absolutely dying. But then again, all my the, the pain, I can't feel anymore. I physically can't feel the pain because it was so painful. That's a weird concept, but that's how I felt like. It was so painful and I had to run 16K more. Literally, by the time I got to 5K, I had to run 16K more and it was tough. I can't lie, it was uphill and you know, it was like the Seven Sisters. If you know, don't know what the Seven Sisters is, it's basically a roll of hills where you get to the top and you, you think that you're gonna uh, conquer this hill and then you realize it's a bigger hill uh, onto the next one. So there was three consistent hills when you get to the top of the hill, you think you finished, then you got another hill, just right in front of you. Then you get to the second hill, you get to the top. Oh my God, I finished. Then you get bigger hill. And you just like, it just takes a toll on your mental state, man. It was so bad. I had to run that five times. I had to run up that hill five times. I remember it was back, it was at like 17K. I was running this like a last lap uphill. It was the three, three like massive hills in between victory and me. And I was, I was like whispering under my breath. It was so bad. Like the sun, I thought it was a nice day, but it turns out when the sun's big, you get dehydrated. And I didn't know that. I didn't clock that. So I didn't bring any water. So that was just stupid for me, right? But I was just not a runner. So I didn't know whether I should bring any water or not. So I decided to run two hours without water. And uh, by the time I reached 17K, my throat was so dry that I can't like motivate myself. I can't say that, let's do it, let's do it, brother. I can't say that. I was basically whispering under my breath because my breath was so shallow, like I literally can't breathe. Um, yeah, it was quite bad. Um, so I was saying under my breath, I was like, let's go, let's go, brother, let's go, brother. You deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it. I just kept like going into my mind. I was saying like, you deserve this kind of thing. You deserve this kind of thing. You can't like give up right now. Think about the 17K you ran. You can't just like stop right now when you've got 5K left to go. So I kept on going and going and going and going. That last stretch of like two, two kilometers uphill, then uphill, then uphill. That was like the hardest thing ever. I got shin splints. My hip actually started re-hurting because it was so bad. I was dehydrated. I couldn't speak at all and I was about to die. Then I was like, cool, I'm gonna keep going. I was like, I'm about to die, but I'm gonna keep going. And I'm gonna keep on going because when you go on a run, you kind of realize that the only way back home is to keep on running. And if you stop right now, you're gonna have to walk like an hour back home. So I was like, how about we bosh it out? How about we run the last 5K so we don't have to walk the 5K? So I decided to run and run and run and run and run. And the half marathon finished by the time I reached 21K. But I was like, I'm gonna up it to 22K because I can't get back. So I ran 22K and I was fine. I remember doing a bunch of stretching and a bunch of drinking water after that because I absolutely died. But that was my story. I made it back, I told my mum, my mum absolutely freaked out. I was on my phone to my mum, I was like, mum, I ran a 21k. And she's like, what the hell, sir? She was like, ain't no way. Then, then daddy started screaming at me as well. <laughs> but I went up daddy, what can I say? What can I say? Obviously, there are some serious health uh, risks to this uh, endeavor. And I do not think that you should absolutely follow my guidance and do something as stupid as me. So I have a few takeaways from uh, what I learned from running a half marathon without any preparation. I've learned that you should prepare. I think you should plan out your route before you do it. I think you should get hydrated before you run in case you die of hallucination like I almost did. I think you should apply sunscreen actually. My skin was burnt. I was red. I was black. I literally became a brown man after running, right? I think the fourth takeaway 
is that you shouldn't run with an injured hip because it's quite bad. And I was just being stupid. And fifth, uh, I think setting stupid challenges to yourself is not the smartest thing. But I just like to up myself. I'm just that kind of guy. And I did it. What can I say? And when you stand at the entrance and you put your arms out and you just be like, oh my God, I feel like I'm top of the world. I'm just like st stupid, stupid man, but I just ran 21K and there's that feeling. It's fucking amazing. So yeah, hope you enjoyed my video. Hopefully you don't do some stupid in this half marathon. But if you do, do ping me a message. Because why not? I love hearing your stupid uh, experiences, just as how you like to watch my stupid experiences. So I love you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.